Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. I'm Giga Guy, and today we're talking about weapon changes. Also, my voice is going to sound like this today, which is a little different. It's less energetic, etc. Uh, the reason for which I'll likely briefly go over at some point in the near future. But that's also why I haven't really been putting content out, which has sucked. Uh, it's hard to make videos when you can't really talk. But I'm trying to get back into it, and I need to catch up a bit. So yesterday, the patch notes for today came out for Battlefield 5, and rather than go through all of it this time like I normally do, because I can't talk very well, I'm a bit behind the coverage of other creators, and a large chunk of it is focused upon vehicles, which I have no expertise in. Instead, this time, I'm going to specifically focus upon the weapon changes, what they are, why they're being implemented, and how they're likely to affect the balance of the game. You know, the knock-on effect the changes could have on the experience of using other weapons, etc. I figure that's a good idea, as most of what I do here is talk about and analyse weapons anyway, and I'll also go over the gadget changes as well. I'll be sure to link to the full patch notes in the description if you want to read all of them, so let's use my weapon expertise and jump right into this. I'll open with DICE seemingly trying to make sure we don't end up playing Explosion Field. There are a number of explosive changes in this patch, all of which are essentially nerfs. Firstly, the PIAT has been altered. The information is a little vague, but it says that it's been adjusted for the new tank values. It now has the proper blast damage for infantry kills, but has overall slightly reduced damage. I really don't like how that's been written, as it's just kind of vague. Something I feel like I complain about a lot when reading DICE's patch notes, but what I can say is that the PIAT is now weaker, either intrinsically or via a knock-on effect of tanks being more durable. This is one of those where we'll have to try it and see what the actual effects are, but the PIAT is going to be a bit less versatile and lethal overall it seems, which in theory I don't have too much of a problem with. I used the PIAT all the time and I personally felt it was a bit too powerful considering it can be used very effectively against both infantry and vehicles, so as long as the nerfs are slight, I'm cool with it. Now, does that mean the rifle nays should be significantly altered to bring them more in line? Absolutely yes, I'm still waiting for those to be brought to an acceptable level, but there's no mention of rifle grenade alterations in these patch notes. I just think they're a bit too strong currently, but we'll deal with it for now. What we do have though is a very welcome change to the AP mine. Its blast damage has been reduced below a one hit kill again, with a, and I quote, new damage curve model giving a reliable flat damage amount out to the edge of the blast effective range. Again, this is a confusing statement saying that there is a curve but there's flat damage, but, <laughs> but I think it means it will deal flat damage out to what will be considered the mine's optimal blast radius and then it will start to tail off. Regardless, it appears that AP mines will now not be able to kill full health players. I've used AP mines a lot and obviously I've played against them a lot recently and I think this is a super welcome change. Although it has been hilarious sometimes picking up random AP mine multis and seeing enemies ragdoll around the map as they run over them etc, their strength was bad for the flow of the game. It makes everything slow down. It's already hard to see things in this game, three of the four classes can use them and you can use multiple of them as well. So the map was beginning to become littered by them and with them as strong as they were, the kill feed was showing AP mine kills super often. It's not good for the gameplay loop. If you disagree then that's up to you, that's totally fine, but let's call them what they were. They were a cheap piece of equipment that provided cheap kills. I got plenty of those kills and I'm still glad to hear about this nerf. It became a bit of a if you can't beat them join them kind of thing, which is always a shame to have a crutch like that in a game. Now how effective this nerf is remains to be seen, and I'd really like your feedback on it in the comments below, because in a game with attrition, they probably will still be killing a lot of people running around weak, and I do expect to see lots of them still doubled up in areas, meaning they'll collectively still be able to kill full health soldiers in one go. But they do still need to be effective to some degree, I understand that, otherwise they'd be useless, and nerfing things into the ground is almost always a bad idea. Then we have changes to how explosives impact vehicles directly. The information reads that they've adjusted the damage done to parts by explosives like mines and dynamite, so they do not instantly destroy parts upgraded via the spec tree. Honestly, at this point, I'm close to applying for the job of writing the patch notes. They're just bad. I think what that's supposed to mean is vehicle parts, like the turret, etc. Not just random unnamed parts of the game or whatever. Regardless, DICE have changed the damage taken by specific parts of vehicles that have been upgraded to be more durable via the specialization tree. I don't really have an issue with that on paper. If people were selecting specializations to make parts of vehicles tougher, but they were still getting destroyed too easily, then this sounds like a good change. 
Then we have changes specifically for the dynamite and the anti-tank mines, which states that they have a new damage curve. Mines in dynamite do very good damage if stuck to or triggered by a vehicle, but rapidly drop off if detonated only near the vehicle. This also makes their lethality against infantry good only at very close ranges, and then reduces to a large wounding radius. This all sounds fine in theory, but I do have some problems with it. For a start, I don't find that dynamite sticks onto vehicles properly a lot of the time, although the dynamite seemingly sticks onto everything you don't want it to stick onto. This nerf would be fine if that had been improved, but it hasn't. So we're likely going to see many more frustrating moments of dynamite not working as intended against vehicles, and now also doing less damage directly because of this. I'm sure vehicle users will be pleased to hear this, as I think a lot of them felt that they could too easily be taken out. And perhaps they could, but this isn't the correct fix for it in my opinion. It's like trying to rectify the situation via implementing a nerf that's directly impacted by seemingly a bug or poor coding. So I'm not too pleased with that one. And I assume this also makes the strategy of shooting AT mines next to a tank less viable as well. And I don't really understand that decision. Who was complaining about AT mines? We'll have to see how much less viable they are, but that was my go-to thing on support. Throw the mines at the vehicle and then shoot them. I feel like if I'm able to do that without being killed, then I deserve to land big damage. Also, was anyone really complaining about anti-tank mines or dynamite damage against infantry? I personally haven't heard any significant complaints, and certainly not any with decent logic behind them. It just seems a bit odd to me, but I'll try it out and see if it all works well. I hope that it does, and improvements are always welcome. I just don't really understand the logic behind this one this time, but I'll have my fingers crossed for it. Now moving on and away from explosives, there's a pretty big piece of news. Semi-automatic rifles now have more and longer felt recoil. So this is a blanket nerf to the semi-auto rifles of the assault class. I don't have any issues with this at all. I've used them extensively and they were basically easy mode. You see semi-auto users everywhere and there's a reason for that. They shoot straight and they're easy to control, so you could fire them at a high tempo and not really see any downsides, allowing for a fast time to kill with not really much recoil. Combine that with the map design of the game and the value of the mid-range scopes check areas out due to poor visibility, a scope that pairs extremely well with semi-autos and you basically had a semi-auto dominated game for anyone that actually wanted to run around a bit. Or in fact, some very stationary players pick semi-autos as well. So making them harder to use is a great move. I'm sure they'll still be very powerful, I hope this nerf doesn't ruin them, but a tweak to increase the difficulty a bit is a good step. This will effectively give them a slower time to kill as it will take more time to land consecutive shots due to increased recoil most of the time. The knock-on effect of this being that weapons such as the STG and the Bren now may be more powerful by comparison at mid-range. This is an example of a change to one weapon type potentially affecting the balance of the entire game in a positive way because the weapon type in question has become the meta. So I'm hoping this brings more weapons into regular selection now. But will my new favourite weapon type, the SLR of the Recon class, start to really dominate now? Well, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a case of the SLRs still won't be that popular and will still require a more specific skill set than the semi-autos. But if you were already doing well with SLRs before, you're likely going to do even better now. Then we have a reduction to the recoil of the FG42 from the support class. DICE felt it was a bit too uncontrollable for its small magazine. Now I already thought the FG42 was a real hidden gem, so I'm delighted to hear about this. It's going to be even better now, so I may well do a follow up video on it soon. Then the Sturmgewehr 1-5 also received a buff. It now has a slightly reduced reload threshold, so it better matches up with the actual animation, meaning you can swap weapons etc a bit more quickly now and not cancel the entire reload. It's a small change, but a welcome one for one of the least desirable weapons in the assault class. Then for more general changes, DICE have made minor improvements to bipod placement on certain objects, throwing ammo and health pouches has been improved in the cases of standing near to objects potentially blocking the throw, they fixed an issue where weapons wouldn't gain full accuracy quickly enough when zooming in and not using iron sights, and the polished action specialization has been improved, which means it's now even better for reducing the accuracy penalty from hip firing. So get that slapped onto an SMG at some point and see if you're now a hip fire god. And so that's my rundown of the key changes to weapon and gadget balance in Battlefield 5. These could be quite significant and overall sound like a step in the right direction, albeit with some concerns. We'll have to just play and see how well implemented it all is. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll quickly mention here we do now have merch listed below if you're interested. T-shirts, hoodies, baby grows, mugs, phone cases, all sorts of stuff. I've had lots of people ask me about it for a long time now, so I sorted it out. If you fancy some, it all helps to support the channel and if 
if you do purchase, feel free to take a picture of you wearing it or using it and tweet it at me. I'll start to throw some of the pictures in videos here and there. The link to my Twitter account is in the description. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and join my Discord server. In the description and my pinned comment. Here's the board of awesome for the epic people who support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and love them all deeply and often. If you want to join them on the board of awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy and I'll see you next time. Laters.